These are a horizontal axis called the x-axis, represented here by a red dot position, which is in minus three. But this can also move on this x-axis. It can move into a negative five, as represented here, and can also go into the positive side of the axis into six, as shown here. We also have the y-axis, um, which again has a negative and positive positions. This is our positive position, six, again, and into negative. So in order to add vectors, we essentially want to copy uh, this vector here, which is vector A, um, and we want to add that on to our other vector, vector B. Um, so addition is commutative, of course. So regardless of which order we add these in, uh, we will still have the same results. So we have different positionings, obviously, for these. So what we want to do is we want to add them together. Um, but first of all, we're going to create a new annotation um, for um, our new position. So we already have A and B and C down the bottom. Uh, now we're going to create um, our new position D. So we give that an annotation, call it D. And then what I also want to do is I want to change the colors of uh, the locator and of the position uh, name. Um, just to make it a little bit easier to see um, while we're looking at it. So I'm going to pick a color here, enable override, and change that into the same color as the rest of them are. And now in our script editor, you can see the positions of these uh, locators, uh, minus two, minus six, four, minus three, and then we also have our formula in here to add them together, add the different positions together. And if we highlight all of that, and put that into our script editor. And then what we want to get, obviously, is what position D is. So we highlight D and put that into our script editor. And we have 2 minus 9. Now what we can do is we can check that position is correct. We can highlight our annotation, and we see it is 2 minus 9. So that is our new position and our new length for addition. Now, obviously, subtraction is not commutative. It matters the order that they're subtracted components from the head from the tail. We subtract the head from the tail to get the components. So we've copied our B. We move it further down beside A to take it away. Um, so we have a, a different definition of our positions. Um, and we obviously want to find the new position and the new magnitude. Um, of each of these. So because it's not going to be the same, because it's not commutative, we have two different results coming in from there. So we need to take B away from A, and we also need to take A away from B. So we'll have A and B to start, but we'll have C and D in our resulting positions. So obviously we need to add those lengths on, new locators and new annotations and a new curve essentially our new line between each one of those. And our new line in between our second one also. So that's it. That's all our work done there. Now we're going to put the formula in. So we've got the head of A, 505, five, head of tail of A, 808 head of B, tail of B, and we put those through into our script editor. Then we have our formula for A and B, subtracted from each other, a formula for our new position C, and obviously we want that position, so we highlight C on its own. Seven minus seven, zero minus one. And then we have our formula for D, highlight that and put it into the script editor. And then to get that new position, obviously we're going to highlight the letter D on its own. And we have positive seven, zero and positive one. So then to get the head of C, we'll put that into the script editor also. And then highlight the head of C.
107 is our new position there. And finally, the head of D. What is a unit vector? A unit vector is a component of a, of a x, y, and z axis, um, and magnitude equal to one normalizes the vector and takes the components. So we have here, i, j, and k are what we're looking for, are the positionings on our unit vector. And then to explain that a little bit further, we can see here what we need, the dimensions we need to find each position on each point of our axis. And obviously all vectors can be expressed as a linear combination of these three vectors that we have here. So to get the length of a vector, the magnitude, um, we're going to be using Pythagoras' theorem. But we want the head of B and we want the tail of B because this is essentially the positioning and how we find the length. So then we put in a formula for B and into the script after with that. And then obviously our Pythagoras theorem through coding. And we're going to put that into the script editor too. So obviously B squared. And then import our math in there as well. And there is our new position. So the dot product is essentially the angle between them. Um, and we do have an angle between all these different points. And obviously we need to use the positions of these annotations in order to find these different points. And this is our formula. So the magnitude of A And so here's our formula, the magnitude of A, and that's our positioning there, 804, our magnitude of B, 800. So we're going to use our formula, um, obviously square root, um, to find uh, our positioning. And in the final part, the cosine of B is equal to 0 0.626, and this will be our final position there of the angle that we were looking for. So any point P in the contusion plane is identified by an ordered pair of numbers X, Y, where X and Y are called the Cartesian coordinates of P. So this essentially is multiplication. It calculates the normal of the surface. So this is our formula for uh, to find what the normal of the surface is. So we have our different positions put in here, um, the multiplication of all these different positions for these different points we have. And then we want to get the cross product, essentially the multiplication of all these different positions um, subtracted from each other in order to get our new locator and our new position. So cross X obviously equal to I, cross Y equal to J, and cross Z to K. Vectors in computer graphics are extremely useful. Uh, so for example, if I have a cube or any kind of object, I have a position, I can move it around, but I can move it around in a precise way. Uh, the Cartesian plane can be used to present images of geometric shapes via a list of coordinates. And this is essentially what the maths in computer graphics is for, the vectors in computer graphics. And it makes it a precise science um, as opposed to uh, something that could be quite unpredictable 
it. For example, if you were making a building and you wanted something accurate, you wanted to make things exactly opposite each other, certain positionings, um, this is an ideal scenario for this um, to be more precise and more particular about how things are going to appear on screen.